But let's move to uh, Masuda-san from the Japanese perspective. Uh, thank you very much. I just follow on what uh, Olivia Pell said, but I don't follow my, my text prepared because almost good things have been uh, consumed by this time. Just uh, how I see the tension between China and the United States from Japanese eye, and at the same time a historian since uh, the Roman Empire, so I see, put it in a long perspective. This is uh, my feeling. Uh, as I inter made intervention yesterday, in 1980-50, the 50 percent or more of world GDP was produced by just two countries, that is India and uh, uh, China. And if history may repeat itself, the rise of China is inevitable cause. My feeling is that probably the U.S. people, top people with sensitivity, has realized the creeping shadow of China, which is accelerating speed, and they have an easy feeling, don't, I don't say fear, of they could be overtaken by China, inevitably. So before China rise to, to much bigger than the United States, unable to even touch fingers on that, they like to everything to slow down or de deter the course of Chinese growth. This is a very basic uh, sentiment uh, of the U.S., which is not the only the product for Donald Trump. In energy scene, a lot of things have been ongoing, and uh, China may have no problem in securing uh, fossil fuel energy, as, as Olivia Pell said. Already, China has taken initiative to increase import from Qatar of LNG, and also recently, China agreed, made an agreement with Total to increase its procurement from Total from 1 million ton per year to 1.5 million. And oil scene, China was the largest import of U U.S. oil in May this year, but proportion, uh, percentage in Chinese import is not so big, and they have no problem in that. But as for coal, there is a problem. Yes, China is a uh, best student in, in dealing with coal, at least albeit for the last few years, but what it's doing in the name of One Belt, One Road is Chinese intensively exporting its coal-fired plant technology to One Belt, One Road countries. There's interesting data. Today, about 130 coal-fired plants are built under the Chinese initiative in those countries, and new, new coal fire plants, not necessarily using the state of art uh, clean coal technology. And uh, if you look back from 2000 to 2016, China led construction of roughly 240 coal fired power plants project in those areas as well. So China is making home green and exporting black things abroad. This is what's happening. And, uh, but in climate policy perspective, China is consulting the leading position in both the deployment of renewable energy and establishment of the world's largest carbon market. Instantly, a friend of mine, academic in China, is designing this uh, largest carbon market, which seems to be working well because of the size involved. So China would be the leader in those two areas. And uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why China is so successful in renewable energy is not just because of government drive to clean the economy. It's coming from, like in the United States, sheer competition among many participants. For example, in clean tech company in China, there was roughly 2,700 in 2005, 2005. Now, in 2015, 10 years later, the number increased over 50,000. And today, that number is bigger. And they are competing very fiercely with each other because of the size of the market again, and support 
plus government support that naturally led China to be the leader but in those areas. China has a clear advantage in technological development. Number one, because of firewall around it. Number two, when Western companies come to China, China wants them to bring the state of art technologies and ask them to review all secret and softwares and hardwares they own. So this is one of the reasons why China is so fast in developing batteries. I, I went to China uh, last year and met uh, several PhDs who are working on um, batteries and they are so proud to say, they said honestly, we are well behind America and Japan and Korea in terms of the batteries, but we have a fleet of 300 PhDs only on battery and in a matter of few years from now, we're going to be the champion in terms of technology, in terms of size of deployment into the market. In, in terms of uh, electric vehicles, yes, China is a champion. For example, in 2017, there's about global one million new EV has been deployed to the market in the world, and more than 50% only in China. And if you talk about uh, global EV stocks, 40% of global stocks are now in China. And uh, in terms of uh, other technologies, China is a champion already artificial intelligence for, for various reasons. But one of the scary stories, just aside from climate and energy issues, is China is using this for social surveillance, uh, using those AI. And they are quietly exporting this technology to some autocratic countries, like uh, some big country in desert. Just a few footnotes on EV. I'm, I'm just quite you know, stimulated by discussion we had about solar panel. Yes, solar panel energy is good. Uh, solar energy is good. Photovoltaic could be champion for in coming years. But we are forgetting one side, negative side of deployment of massive amount of solar panels. How much energy do you think we need? How much environmental externalities coming from purifying and crystallizing silicones? And that number of question. And solar panels have a lifetime of roughly 20 years. After 20 years, what they do? If they dump them as industrial waste, it causes another serious environmental pollution all over the world. If they completely recycle, use solar panel, the massive cost involved with many countries, the countries there, there to bear the cost. It's all already a big problem for Japan and Germany, and most importantly, China and in many other countries who are now rapidly deploying solar panels. So we shouldn't forget this downside, although it's good for climate purposes. If we pollute the entire planet, we are going against the, the, the uh, big uh, common goods of the, of the human race. Lastly about EV, because my company is supplying critical parts for EV, let me allow me to say something about EV. EV is pretty good, but as uh, Professor Cooper said, it takes such a long time to replace all these existing fleet of uh, combustion engines. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If you remember a wonderful marriage of uh, uh, Prince Henry, Henry of the UK, he drove Blue Jaguar out of Windsor Castle. It was converted to EV. Conversion of EV is one brilliant idea of increasing EV fleet on the planet. Converting old car is life cycle cost of car making EVs far less because already it's used and more battery provided a cheaper cost and better motor will make conversion of EV 
a big industry. And I like, I'm dreaming of a world where newly product EV is competing with lovely second hand EV. That's going to accelerate the deployment of EVs. So I like to end my stories about a bright future. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. By the way, um, you talk about uh, China and coal. What is the Japan's policy about coal? Still, Japan is building the new coal power plant and even try to export the efficient coal plant. What do you think, uh, Japanese policy on coal? I'm, uh, I'm a Japanese. I'm brought up in Meti, but I'm pretending to be a foreigner. And I do not believe the policy held by Japanese utility companies and the government about coal-fired power plant is not something recommended. Japan is still constructing roughly 40 coal-fired power plants, and Japanese banks are very hesitant to stop uh, providing loans to those facilities. So in a way, Japan is 10 years behind than average Western countries in terms of climate change. I don't like to criticize uh, good engineers and having said about clean coal technologies, but maybe it's time for Japan to depart from the old legacy uh, of, of those technologies and maybe should fly high with some lighter technologies. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I cannot agree more, and that's the reason why I asked the question to uh, Carlos Ghosn or Toyota or whoever <coughs> say that these <coughs> renewable energy hundred companies will probably kick coal power plant out of anywhere. That is probably would happen.